Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday, July 30th. We thank you for joining us on Fix 11 Morning News. I'm John Muller. And I'm Kirsten Cole. In for Vanessa Freeman this morning. Wild weather moving through our area last night, prompting multiple tornadoes. Check in with Marissa Torres. Marissa, mm -hmm. I know the National Weather Service was reporting ping pong sized hail. Mm -hmm. That speaks to how ferocious the storms are, right? A very turbulent evening from flooding from ping pong size hail over an inch in diameter that was reported in spots. You had flooding. You have several tornado watches and warnings that were coming down across central and southern New Jersey uh, from the early evening hours, the last one expiring around 10 o'clock last night. So what we did was we put everything on loop just to see where it all began. This is from 5 o'clock. You have the storm coming in, and it really was central southern New Jersey that took a brunt of this storm. I mean, one after another, we were watching these cells pop up and, uh, you know, you just don't want to mess around with this sort of situation. I know we were watching it and breaking in, uh, but it was rough in spots. The National Weather Service, yes, they are going out today. They have several locations, though nothing been pinned down just yet that they're going to be going and surveying uh, later today. So we're going to be watching that and bringing you the latest. Notice how quiet it is, though, that front offshore. We have another cold front that's going to drop down, and that's going to pick up some winds out of the northwest. 72 right now, still a little muggy. And looking at the day planner for today. So with that drier air coming in, it'll be quite breezy. Van Wick southbound, you have construction here as well. Atlantic Avenue to Liberty Avenue and a little bit of a delay there as well. Uh, this should also be clearing up. Warning ended for parts of New Jersey and our last tornado watch expired also for parts of New Jersey. So it is much calmer this morning. Uh, we're at 72 degrees in the city. Lindenhurst, you're at 74, 66 up in Highland. Winds already out of the northwest. They're going to be picking up later today. That's going to be funneling in. Not just cooler air, but very dry, dry air. So when it comes to humidity, our dew point temperatures right now in the upper 60s. So we are still feeling uncomfortable out there and quite sticky. But by dinner time, we are very dry and picking up just under half an inch of rainfall, even less than that at LaGuardia. Islip barely seeing a thing and about a half an inch at Newark. So we were talking about how much rain we've seen so far in Central Park as being one of the wettest Julys. In fact, the third wettest July on record. We didn't quite bump up to that second spot, but we were close. So this is where we're going to stay. We're not expecting any more rain as we round off the month and head in through the weekend. So live radar right now, you have the winds coming out of the west. A little breezy out there, but really not going to pick up in terms of these wind speeds until later this afternoon. Clouds are trying to work their way out as well. They'll get more assistance when a second cold front drops down. And Jersey. We started the radar loop from yesterday around 6 o'clock when everything started to come in. Now, focus on areas around Mercer County and then pushing in through Monmouth where you had this cell coming through and we did have a radar confirmed tornado. Happens. As we march through the morning, you'll start to see dry air come down from the north. So by 3 p.m. we're in the 50s and then by Saturday morning, our dew point temperatures in the 40s. This is very reflective of early fall. It is going to be a refreshing breeze out there. We'll break down the extended forecast so coming up just ahead for you. Move it a little bit further south, and this is where we're really looking at through uh, Mercer County amounts from three inches to five inches in spots out near Manalapan, and where we also had a radar confirmed. MTA Chairman and CEO Pat Foy stepping down, and today interim New York City Transit President Sarah Feinberg is also going to say goodbye. PIX 11's Greg Mocker shows us what this means for a system that has had a lot of issues since the beginning of the pandemic. On this Friday, TGIF July 30th, time right now is 531. I'm John Muller. And I'm Kirsten Cole. Here's what we're working Chris on. Cruz will be out today surveying the damage, and we'll bring you the latest. We're Tracking temperatures now, we're at 70. The city, Armonk, Hoboken, little shy of 70 degrees in Asbury Park. Much cooler conditions north and west of the city highlands. Still dealing with some fog there, but that's going to be driven out because those northwesterly winds will be picking up. That gusty flow is what we need to help drive things out, and we'll be topping out in the low 80s. We'll talk more about those gusty winds. That'll mean for your weekend and uh, cooler than normal temperatures. We could be talking about some record lows come tomorrow morning. Hey, Marissa. Hey there, Stacey. And so it is the top of the hour. We saw that construction on the FDR Drive. Uh, they have two lanes that they have blocked off, so everyone trying to funnel down just one lane southbound. Well, we'll be on the decline, so there are those wind particles, and it's uh, indicating that those wind speeds are, in fact, nice. we are clear for now. And uh, the next chance for, As you know, the winds are a little bit uh, mm -hmm. National Weather Service, so we'll bring them to you later. Winds coming out of the northwest in the 20s, and it'll be quite gusty through the afternoon. The dew points will also go low. It'll continue to be quite breezy throughout. You're the good to go. Just make sure you uh, swim near the lifeguards and just uh, plan accordingly. Uh, three to four feet on the ocean, one to two of the sound, and do that early in the day. Do that early in the day.
at 651, we have a new delay and likely the biggest delay we're looking at right now in our area, and that's on the Southern State Parkway. So, if I do, good morning, happy Friday. Happy Friday. I'm just, I was checking because I was told I had alfalfa hair, so I was seeing if I, this is the only <laughs> like, shot I, think, I can see, can see the hair. I think I saw the person see. telling you have alfalfa hair. No, I think it's okay. D ignore the person. You know better. He's just jealous because you have hair and he doesn't. Right. I'm just saying. Right, 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 You're right. perfect, Dan. Hi, right, dude. Good morning. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. I was... <laughs> Checking because I was told I had alfalfa hair, so I was seeing if I this is the only <laughs> like, shot I, think, I could see could see the hair. I think yeah. I saw the person see. telling you have alfalfa hair. <laughs> <laughs> D d ignore the person. <laughs> you know better. He's just jealous because you have hair and he doesn't. Right. <laughs> I'm just right, saying. Right, right, you're right. You're perfect, Dan. I'm betting when. Yeah, Dan Manorino. Let's bring in the whole team right now. Monty's so hoping a lucrative new incentive leads to shots in people's arms. Today, New York City will be handing out $100 to people getting their first dose. Yeah, and this even caught the attention of President Joe Biden. Picks on Katie Clark. And more than a thousand new cases were reported yesterday, and that's the first time the state surpassed one of the founding members of Journey. But first, a moving story about a local family bringing inspiration and awareness to a rare genetic. 61 million Americans are living with a disability, and to put that number in perspective, that is one in four people.